Dear students, welcome to the second presentation from Pharma College, Department of Accounting and Management. Name of the course is Fundamentals of Accounting 2 for first year accounting and management students. I am the Gennett. When we come to chapter 2, chapter 2 contains about plant assets and it is intangible assets. In the introduction part, in the previous chapter or in chapter 1, you have learned about the accounting for current assets or inventories. In this chapter or chapter 2, you will learn or discuss about the issues of plant assets and it is related depreciation. Here, most business enterprise holds such major assets and land buildings, equipments, furniture, tools, and etc. Those assets help produce revenue over many period of facilitating the production and sale of goods, services to customers. When we come to the nature of plant assets, those plant assets is sometimes known as fixed assets. Those fixed assets are long-term or relatively permanent assets such as equipment, machinery, buildings, and land. Other descriptive titles for fixed assets are plant assets or property, plant or equipment. They are totally known as fixed assets or plant assets. Well done. When we come to fixed assets characteristics, there are the following characteristics can be what presented. The first one is they exist physically and those are tangible assets. They are also owned and used by the company in its normal operations. And the third characteristics of fixed assets is they are not offered for sale as part of normal operations. When we come to the determination of the acquisition cost of plant assets, the acquisition cost of plant assets or fixed assets is the cash or cash equivalent purchase price, including incidental costs required to complete the purchase and to transport the assets and to prepare it for use or consumption. For example, like expenditures related to the acquisition of a plant asset such as freight, insurance, well in transit and installation or including in the cost of the assets because they are necessary if the asset is to function. The next one is the cost of acquiring fixed assets including all amounts spent to get the assets in the place and ready for use or ready for consume. For the examples of fixed assets are like land, building, machinery, and equipment. They are the best examples of plant assets or fixed assets. Well done, students. Look at the following chart and pictures you like to consider and identify. The fees of building, the fees of machinery and equipment, as well as the fees of land. Take a moment and identify their description. Okay, students, I hope you have identified their description, their fees, their 
prices of those fixed assets. When we come to the illustration, this is the best example how to calculate the cost of land. Here, Jerry Business Enterprise acquired a piece of land for future sites. It paid a cash price of 210,000 brokerage fees of 7,500 and title fees of 3,000. 5,000 have paid to have unwanted building removed and also paid 1,500 to have the site graded. The business received 2,000 per salvage from the old building. The cost of the land is determined as follow. Here given is presented. Costs or cash price negotiated price is 210,000. Title fees 3,000. Brokerage fees 7,500. Cost of grading is per 1,500. Cost of removing or unwanted building will be 5,000. Less amount or salvage received is 2,000. So the total cost of the land will be 225,000. To calculate the cost of land, you'd like to add those costs and minimize or deduct salvage value or salvage received. The final result will be the total cost of the land. Very good student. When we come to the next point, accounting for depreciation. Fixed assets with exception of land, those all fixed assets can lose their ability over time or to provide service. To use the costs of fixed assets such as equipment and buildings should be regarded as an expense over their useful life. This period recording of the cost of fixed assets as an expense is so-called depreciation. Because land has an unlimited life, it is not depreciated. When we use for a long period of time, we cannot say land is, is depreciated. The use of a contra asset account allows the original cost to remain unchanged in the fixed assets account. The next point is depreciation can be caused by physical or functional factors, factors that causes depreciation. When we come to physical depreciation factors, it includes wear and tear during use or from exposure to weather or weather condition. This is physical factor. The next one is functional depreciation factors. This includes obsolescence or undesirability and changes in customer needs or wants that causes the asset to no longer provide services for which it was intended. For example, equipment may become obsolete due to changing of what? Technology. When? Technology is changed throughout time, through period. The functional depreciation factor may happen. The next one, factors in computing depreciation expenses. There are three factors determine the depreciation expenses for fixed assets. The first one is the initial cost of fixed assets. This determined using the concepts discussed and illustrated earlier or above in this chapter. The next factor is the expected useful life of a fixed asset is estimated at the time the asset is placed into service. So, estimates of expected useful lives 
are available from industry trade associations. The internal, the internal revenue service also publishes guidelines for useful leaves for those fixed assets, which may be helpful for financial reporting purposes. The third factor is the residual value of a fixed asset at the end of its useful life is estimated at the time the asset is placed into services. Here, when we come to define the residual value, the residual value is sometimes refers to as scarp value or salvage value and as well as trade-in value. Here, those are the three factors that determine the depreciation expense of plant asset or fixed asset. When we come to the difference between those factors, fixed asset is initial cost and its residual value, so-called the asset's depreciation cost. The depreciable cost is the amount of the asset's cost that is allocated over its useful life as depreciation expense. When we come to the methods, which means methods of computing depreciation, depreciation methods differ primarily in the amount of cost allocated to each period. A list of depreciation amounts for each period or each year of an asset's useful life is totally known as depreciation schedule. Here, the most common methods of computing depreciation for plant assets are presented. The first one is the straight line method. Second one, the double declining balance method and the sum of the yearly digits method. And the last one is the unit of production methods. Those methods are very important to compute the detraction or the depreciation amount of fixed assets. Here, best example is presented below, illustration. Suppose that pharma business enterprise acquires a new office equipment at a cost of per 6,000. It is estimated that the computer has an estimated residual value of per 1,000 at the end of its estimated useful life of four years. Here, the yearly or annual depreciation would be computed as follow. There is a general formula is present to calculate the annual depreciation. Here, annual depreciation is equal to cost minus salvage value divided by estimated useful life. Here, 6,000 minus 1,000 divided by the estimated useful life will be what? Given for four years is equal to 1,250. 1,250 bar is the annual depreciation for this company. Well done, students. You have got more concepts how to calculate about annual depreciation. Look at the following best illustration in the methods of a straight line method. And also take a moment and consider those information. Well done, students. When we come to the next point, leasing of plant assets. When we define the term lease, it is a contract for the use of an asset for a period of time or for limited period. Leases are often used in business. The two parties to a lease contract are as follow. The first party is the leaser. When we say the leaser, this is the party who owns the asset or the owner of the asset who is known as leaser. 
The next party is the lazy. This is the party to whom the rights to use the assets are guaranteed by the leaser. Those two parties are involved in leasing of what's fixed asset or plant assets. A lease contract can be classified as either capital lease or operating lease. When we come to the next point about intangible assets, intangible assets, they are long-lived assets that are used in the operation of a business. Those assets are so-called intangible assets because they do not exist physically. The following are the best examples for intangible assets. The first one is patents. It is an exclusive right to produce and sell goods with one or more unique features. Their limitation will be what limited by our federal government for 20 years. After 20 years, it will be what modified. Without modification, it is what valueless or expired. This is known as patents. The second intangible asset is copyrights. It is also an exclusive right to publish and sell a literary, artistic, or musical compositions. They are issued by the federal government and extended for 70 years. After 17, after 70 years, it will be what expired without modifications. The third best examples of intangible asset is a trademark. It is a name, title, term, or symbol used to identify or express a business and its products for 10 year intervals. The last and the fourth best example in intangible asset is goodwill. Goodwill related with location, product quality, and as well as good management or good managerial skill can be considered as goodwill in business. Locally, in America, known as Malcolm Sebenna or Malcolm Sennamagwar. So, they are known as intangible assets. Here, there is an exercise is presented to you to check your understanding. Here, illustration. This is individual assignment. Assume that a piece of equipment is purchased for 5,000 per and that is it has an estimated useful life of five years and an estimated residual value of per 500. Assume further that the equipment is purchased on October 2 and that the yearly accounting period ends on December 31. By using the general formula, record the depreciation for three months, which means October through December. The three months depreciation under the straight line method will apply. Required, calculate and record the annual depreciation of the equipment. I hope you have got more information and more concept about fixed assets or plant assets and intangible assets. Thank you for your attention. This is the end of chapter 2. Next class will start chapter 3. Until next time, goodbye and steady heart.